Hey everyone, welcome to the Swick Podcast. Talk about AI, business, and comedy. Hosted by two former Googlers. My uh, co-host is out buying Hawaiian Island. Uh, if you like AI and business takes without doomers or hype, this is your show. So, got quite a lot to talk about today. I'm going to see if I can get as much as done possible in uh, 30 minutes here. So, I want to first go into uh, Mira Moretti. And was talking over here, and she made some interesting points. Inside the labs, we have these capable models, and you know they're not that far ahead from what the public has access to for free. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different trajectory for bringing technology into the world that what we've seen historically and it's a great opportunity because it brings people along it gives them a intuitive sense for the capabilities and risks and allows people to prepare for the advent of this of, of bringing advanced ai into the world and obviously the opportunities are huge now it's it's normal that we talk a lot about the risks uh, because they're so important uh, but also we wouldn't do this if we didn't believe that the opportunities here are huge okay so uh, for a long time on this show we've been dealing with uh, kooks who've been saying the open ai is agi internally has q star stuff and whatnot and um, we've done ex extensive coverage on that and that a lot of it uh is we thought oh we thought it was hype um we're very show it to us first and then from there uh we can we can make a make a decision if what you have is legit but here's Mira, uh, Mira saying no what you see today is what we kind of have already we also had open ai come out on their lawsuit on their when they responded to elon musk lawsuit saying we don't have a agi or any q star stuff and then we have this gentleman called Ashutosh Vastava. I just butchered his name. This is next level BS from OpenAI CTO Mir Marathi. She wants us to believe that they don't have a more powerful model in house. And why the heck was Sam Altman hyping that GBD4 would be the dumbest model any of you will ever have to use? Never trust OpenAI people when they say something in public. Oh. Uh, a couple things. Summer is here and the kids are home and you're probably about to gouge your eyes out because you don't know what to do with them. Or maybe you caught a charge for committing a nonviolent felony and now you have to do community service to pay back your debt to society. So what are you going to do? Thangs has you covered. Thangs is a community that has awesome 3D models. You can subscribe to various creators who are creating fantastic work, uh, such as Ink 3D. They create all this cool stuff here, such as like this little cup where you can put your pencils in and whatnot and Spire the Dragon-like stuff, or Terra de Verdant. It makes all these really cool planters. Um, then you have Big Bricks, who makes these really cool Lego figurines. And then you have Super Crazy Prints, so all of your Pokemon needs. What's really great is uh, thanks as partner with Svic, and if you enter promo code SVIC, you get 15% off of your subscription. So check out thanks.com. It's really cool. There. Uh, first, anyone can say this, like, the technology we're using today is going to be the crappiest technology compared to the future. Like, that's been true since the beginning of time. So we could say maybe an apocalypse happens and we go into the, the, the dark ages. Now we're in medieval times and this was the best technology we would have for the next thousand years. But eventually technology would improve again and this technology would look antiquated to future generations. Second thing, Elon Musk has been saying he have full self-driving cars for the last 10 some odd years. Part of the reason to be in business is you got to be a showman. You got to be a marketer. You got to hype things up to a degree. You got to keep attention on yourself. Keep attention on yourself. That means that you get more customers, you get more money, you get the best engine talent, and you get favorable terms on raising capital. Everyone plays that game. That's what people do in industry. So let's go to another clip here. This is from Frank uh, Francois uh, Cholette. I pro pronounced the name incorrectly, like Gillette, but whatever. Uh, I watched the Dwarkesh Patel interview he did, and we'll do a further reaction on Monday. I thought he did. I thought 
Francois did a fan Francois, sorry, pronouncing did a fantastic job. I thought Dwarkesh has put feels like he's put his ego and hope into AGI happening soon, and so he was a bit let down over uh, Francois's uh, core argument of basically saying the LMs are very good at studying tons of data and then kind of regurgitating that back to you. It's very impressive. It could get it could help out with a lot of different use cases. It's one of the best computer one of the best algorithms we've seen so far. But it is not AGI. Now the way human brains work is we have the ability to not see we have the ability to see unique situations and then from that solve this the unique situation. And we don't need to see millions of examples before we can get there. And so he created this thing called the ARC, ARC benchmark, which this benchmark does not show up in training data for these models. And based upon their uh, the architecture, how this benchmark works is it creates a, a like three different, there are two different pictures of the pattern. And this job of the, and any a model is using the benchmark to guess what the third pattern is going to be. But it basically breaks how these LLMs operate because it generates like a net new pattern. And that's something you've never seen in their, in their training, in their training data. And so he's arguing that there's probably going to be a system that's going to get the best of what LLMs do, but then the best of our uh, some system uh, systems unique ability to be shown novel situations and to be able to problem solve, and that's going to eventually lead to some more advanced system. And so in this conversation, he is, starts talking about how. AGI, how OpenAI is set back AGI by five or 10 years. So let's watch this. Pretty sad that uh, Frontier Research is no longer being published. Uh, if, you look, if you look back, you know, four years ago, um, well, everything was just openly shared, like all the state-of-the-art results were, were published. And this is no longer the case. And it's very much, you know, OpenAI single-handedly uh, changed the game. And I think um, OpenAI basically set back uh, progress towards AGI by quite a few years, probably like five to 10 years for two reasons. And one is that, well, they, co they caused this uh, uh, complete closing down uh, of research, frontier research publishing, uh, but also uh, they trigger this uh, initial uh, burst of uh, hype uh, around LLMs. And now LLMs have uh, sucked the oxygen out of the room, like everything, everyone is just doing LLMs. Um, and I see LLMs as more of an off-ramp on the on the path to AGR, actually. Okay, so I see what he's saying, and the LMs, you know, okay, uh, James, he says, why LC is already stirring up beef related to this clip on X? Oh, if you, got, if you have a link, uh, JMT, let me know. And so, I think what he says, there is, there is truth to Yes, everyone's focusing on LLMs now. There's so many papers that Joe and I get is like, hey, we did another prompt pattern, a new agent we created, and it's better on this benchmark than an LLM, and all it is is taking someone else's foundational model and adding scaffolding to it. Great. What I would say, though, to counter, not to counter his point, is one, this is the first time that LLMs have been, uh, that AI, has been commercially viable to the consumer and people are paying for it because they now can use it their way. Previously, it's been, oh yeah, Google and Facebook are working on AI, but they're doing it to make it so that their algorithm works better in the back end, or they're making it better so they can serve ads to you or analyze your data, but nothing that you can touch. Now the consumer has taste for AI, and this is the first time that we have AI companies that are actually bring in, bring, starting to bring in enough money to keep themselves self-sustainable. Why is that important for the AI market? Now, he doesn't bring up that in the 1960s, there was an AI researcher who decided, said, hey, the future to AI is in this direction, and we should spend all of our resources going towards it. Fred's name's, I want to say Minsky. I don't joke and correct me on this, but, and so everyone was like, yep, yeah, he's saying this, let's go for it. So everyone went down that direction, and he was completely wrong, and decades were lost going towards that one direction. So before this boom, in AI was basically university researchers would get grants. And if you could make a convincing argument to a university that you should, you should follow my research, you might get lucky enough to come across an idea that's, that's novel 
and and you have some br- breakout results. And I think that's what uh, Jeffrey Hinton and uh, and Elias Hussberg had with Alex Net and all their work they were doing, which was great. But very easily too is you can have university politics that get in the way of actually this research happening. Then you had Google, Facebook, and the rest start saying, hey, we're going to start funding AI research because we think it's good for our products. Um, they had some breakthroughs. Google had attention is all you need and Lambda, but didn't have the courage to actually release it. OpenAI releases their model, and now you actually have a company that their core business is to release these models and put it in the hands of, of users. And OpenAI just came out. I share this in our Discord. Let me go over to our Discord. Give me one second. Let me get over there. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I shared in our Discord that uh, OpenAI's uh, annual annualized revenue doubles to 3.4 billion since uh, late 2023. OpenAI has more than doubled its annualized revenue to 3.4 billion in the past six months or so. OpenAI's Sam Altman has told staff a sign of growth. Chat to be developers' business is accelerating despite intensifying competition. So this is a big moment because. We saw a similar moment like this in in the early 2000s. In the late 90s, all these internet companies were just supported by VC money, and we're at the whim of, whim of VCs or the whim of universities who were doing research. And a lot of companies went um, tits up because it turned it turned out uh, that the uh, a lot of companies were just not not profitable whatsoever. And then Google was able to eke out a profit. Yahoo was making profit too, but Google was the first one to, you know, pure internet company. Well, not the first one, but it was a major one that was making tons of cash off of the internet and then used that money to then uh, reinvest in itself and reinvest in other startups and new technology to push the internet further. Then also what it did is it started making bets in different research areas. One of them was an AI, and that's what led to attention is all you need. Now, what's nice about open AI and attention is all you need. Eventually, turned to the GPTs and ChatGPT. The size of OpenAI now is they made three point four billion dollars in in revenue. And of course, you know they've been burning a lot of their cash these malls off the ground. But that revenue number is going to continue to accelerate and increase. Now, the problem I have with uh, let's see here. Let's go back to Frankos. Is he was making a lot of great arguments to Dora Kesh, but he's missing the point that eventually. I think at some point, we'll, 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 we haven't seen it yet, but eventually it could happen. We don't know. Performance and LLMs could top off. It could, couldn't happen. But when that does happen, do you think OpenAI is just going to say, well, sun sets, uh, sun rises and sets on LLMs. I guess we're out of business, y'all. Or are they going to look at their fountain of money and say, we need to make more bets in different spaces than LLMs? Maybe we'll put it in Jebba, the crap that uh, uh, Jan LeCun talks about. Maybe we'll put it into what Frank Host is doing. No, if they're smart, the researchers are already seeing, hey, let's not put all of our eggs in one basket in one architecture. And that's what people keep on getting locked into. They start thinking like, oh, open AI is just for the LLMs. Like, no, the LLM is the first thing it's producing commercial results for common folk. And so they're dumping resources into it because there's more to squeeze out of that. But if they're smart... They're already looking into it. They're already doing research in other areas, and they're building up that that arm. So I think, yes, everyone's focusing on LLMs now, but he's missing the story that now OpenAI has their own bank, and their business is AI research, and so they're going to make even more bets in different in different areas of AI. And I also don't think it's a zero sum game. Um, I think researchers, a lot of them want to get a lot of them want to get tenured, and so they need to produce something. And it's very easy to do. Let's do n plus one. Uh, paper on some L and research. Okay, there it is. Some scaffolding for an agent. Okay, I'm published. High five. Now give me tenure. I'm making it sound very easy. It's very hard to do what Frank Coase is saying is sitting down and actually thinking of what the next architecture could be. So, and that's 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 everything in life. Think about all these startups that are coming up. They're all AI startups and they're all um, Me Too companies. We have, we see it in every cycle. We had Me Too crypto companies. We had Me Web 2.0 companies, or app companies. We had Me Internet companies. It, always happens and the same thing happens with research it's very hard to go across uh, go against the current and think independently and go a different direction so let's go into comment section uh, and play one says yon lacoon he's wrong full of it if you got a better idea go beat chat gbt as simple as that and use no transformers researchers think compute is free that is so tr- that, is, that is true uh you know what i think for yon and i think of frank always that's great, but 
chat GPT is producing results. The LLMs, the GPT, general, general pre-trained transformers producing results. So either go and create something new, and I'm not saying you can't, you're smarter than me, you're smarter than a lot of people, but at the same time, you can't have... In, I wasn't getting haterade from Francois compared to I was getting haterade from Jan. Jan has deep haterade for LLMs, which is really interesting. But I just don't like it when people are, are seeding all this uh, envy and animosity. Okay. Let's see. Elsa, good to hear from you. He seems to care more about the egos of the scientists versus making it serve humanity. If it sets back AGI, it's okay as long as we don't experience. Only monks should learn to read. That leads to dark age. I like that. Only monks should learn to read. Yes. So a lot of these researchers are playing for, I would say, charitably, higher stakes of, I want, I want AGI. That's what I want. And then I think there's a lot of fool. And a lot in the audience prefer AGI. That's great. I want AGI too. That's great. But for me, what I really care about is there's so much crap work that I have to they had to do in corporate, and there's so much crap work that I have to do in the back end to get this podcast going. Like it's just simple things of just like, okay, I just finished a live stream. Now, can it be nice that the computer would be able to then send a message to my editor and say, can you edit this? And then also, when it's done, it automatically then sends out social media messages to all the channels. Oh no, can't do that because Twitter. Uh, turned off their API. You got to spend a hundred bucks a month if you want to use that. And then Facebook turned off their endpoint, so I got to manually do that too. Then my editor is working on a different platform. And there's all this friction right now. I just want to see what LLMs could do to reduce that friction in our our day to day life. As far as AGI stuff, sure, whatever. But I still think with these current models, if progress was stopped, and I'm not an AI researcher, if progress was stopped, and I'm just looking purely from business applicability standpoint, I still think there's a lot of use cases in businesses that could use LLMs to improve themselves. And the reason why you're not seeing it lickety split is because it's never been in human history lickety split when a new technology comes out, you get full adoption. It takes time. It takes psychological changes. People need to be uh, used to these new LLMs. Like right now, my goddaughter, she's three years old. She uses chat GPT, writes stories for her and things like that. When she's 20 something and she's going into corporate, she's not going to even, if anyone came to her and said, Ugh. LMs, those things like hallucinate sometimes. You'd be like, if you use a rag model to take care of. Uh, LMs, like, aren't you afraid that like it's going to produce something crazy? Uh, I'm going to review my results. Like, what do you want me to do? You want to go to Google and do an old search and keyword search and find stuff? So there is a psychological changes that are involved. Okay, so Timothy says, um, no, no, no. Uh, JMP says if GPT five is going to be significantly better than a whole than the whole we hit a plateau talk is off the table and Nvidia stock is going to explode even more. Ding ding ding. Yes. So I have a lot of people who are like, hey, check out this new model. Check out that model. What do you and Joe think of this and everything? And it's like, look, it's this on the MLU and ma 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 ma. I ah, eh, we don't really just don't really don't really care. We want to see either want to see right now what we really care well i care about is llama 400b how that turns out and the second what this what the next iteration of gpt comes out if the next iteration of gpt comes out and it's 20 30 40 percent better than what we have for gpt4 and i'm very 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 vague it means like hallucinations are going away it can remember longer context and not get honked up on windows meaning if you tell if you have a connected multi-on it's able to understand all the ui and move things forward um it is uh, just just smarter and, and more productive and able to get things done. Then I'm gonna say, oh, whoosh, there's more, there's a lot more juice to squeeze. But if it's like a marginal improvement, then I'm saying, okay, they know something that's going on in the architecture level where we've kind of hit some type of plateau. Okay, so another thing, people like to will go to Joe and I and be like, hey, can you react to like a three hour video and there's a lot of stuff, a lot of content going on. It's hard for us to keep track of everything. We don't have time. So the easiest thing you do is you go over here, click clip. Templates. It's, it's and then you go over here. Oh, that's like, okay, let's talk about what that means. So here's one question about from that benchmark. So 30 Pause it. And then you say, can you react to Dwarkesh being salty about his LLM dreams? Okay. And you click share clip. And then you go to copy. Then you join us in our Discord over here. And I have suggestions for next, uh, no, not that one. I have live stream, uh, post content. Uh, so this is what you do. 
uh, and LSA eyes in there. Thank you very much. Uh, your volume is really low today. It was easier to hear Marathi. Your sound is way lower. Great. Well, it's at 77. I'll turn it up to 80. We'll see what happens. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so then you got the clip. You post the clip in here in our Discord. And then it's clipped for me, and I know exactly what to respond to, and that dramatically increases the odds of Joe and I uh, responding to your fantastic questions. Okay, let's go to Salt Factory. Helen Toner. Unfortunately, there's still a lot that, that is pretty hard to talk about, just for all kinds of legal and confidential Sorry about reasons. that. But um, the way I would put it very briefly Sorry about is that. essentially that we had had years' worth of issues with trust, accountability, oversight, and then that was really compounded by some very serious conversations we had with leadership at the company, um, a couple of senior executives last fall. Um, some of the examples you named were part of it. There are many other examples that formed a larger part of the picture. Um, I think better not to kind of rehash it all here, but if you know if folks are interested, they can certainly go look at that podcast episode. Um, and uh, I think you know maybe we can leave it there for for now. Hmm. Interesting what she said there. To our next next topic of oh oh, this is from Josie. This better be a good scoop. Yesterday I was walking around San Francisco, and I saw a panhandler. He had a sign on it that said, will seed, mistrust, halt AI launches, and be a douche for unicorn equity. It looked like it was the open AI team looking for a job. Now, that was not the open AI alignment team that got fired for leaking. That was panhandling. You saw that one. It just get me real stories around here. I just, this freaking dog is ridiculous sometimes. Okay. We did another stream on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. It's our exclusive stream for our members. And we covered uh, the conversation explores the supply chain of NVIDIA, the various players involved in the production and distribution of their chips, discusses how NVIDIA designs chips, but outsources the manufacturing to founders like TMC. Then we go into just the whole entire like chip supply chain, who are the major players, all the games that are being played. And then this, there's a lot of saber rattling for War of Taiwan and things like that. So if you are a supporter for five bucks a month, you get access uh, to the episode. You can either support us by hitting the join button or go to patreon.com for sick. The show is currently not sustainable. So we need people to join. We need people to give subs. We need just help. So if you can, do that. That'd be super duper awesome. Now, let's, what other stories I want to cover here? Um, okay, so this is a, a, a new one that just broke. We had a, another person get arrested recently in tech. So let's see here. Executives from ADHD startup arrested, charged with fraud. The founder and head doctor of telehealth company Dunn Global were arrested and charged with fraud, accused by federal authorities of conspiring to provide easy access to Adderall and other stimulants. What, Josie? They're done? No, that's not... Yes, the name of the company is Dunn Global and saying now they're done. That's just not so good. Okay. Dunn founder Ruth Hay and clinical leader David Brody allegedly uh, arranged for the prescription of more than 40 million stimulant pills and targeted drug seekers, spending tens of millions of dollars in deceptive social media advertising, according to the Justice Department. The executives conspired to defraud the pharmacies and Medicare and other insurers, and he and other... The, Others at the company allegedly made false claims about Dunn's prescribing practices to pharmacies in order to get prescriptions filled. The government also accused he and Brody of obstructing of justice. The startup collected more than $100 million in revenue, the Justice Department alleged. These defendants exploited the COVID-19 pandemic to develop and carry out a $100 million scheme to defraud taxpayers and provide easy access to Adderall and other stimulants for no legitimate medical purpose, Attorney uh, General Merrick Garland said in a statement. The department will pursue others seeking to profit from addiction by illegally distributing controlled substance online, he said. Messages sent to Dunn weren't immediately returned. Attempts to reach he and Brody were unsuccessful. Hmm, I wonder why. Hmm, get a lawyer up. Uh, the company, what Wall Street Journal? What do you want to talk about? The, the, the company has previously said it, it's a technology platform that connects patients with medical professionals and does prescribe medications. It has also defended its prescription practices and said providers use their clinical judgments to decide whether to prescribe stimulants to patients. 
The case was filed in the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of California. It's the first time the Justice Department has alleged criminal drug distribution related to practices involving a telehealth company. Historically, it has focused on dangerous, dangerous prescribing practices related to opiate cases. If convicted, he and Brody each face years in prison. I wonder if uh, he, because he's female, if she's going to be able to go to the same prison that uh, Alyssa Holmes in. I heard it's very nice. The charging documents allege that he and Brody structured the Dunn platform to facilitate easy access to Adderall and purposely limited information available to conclusions and instructed them to provide prescriptions even if members didn't qualify. At one point, he wrote that the structure of the company used to pay clinicians was put in place to dis-encourage follow-up medical care. The company refused to pay prescribers for medical visits or time spent caring for patients and paid them based on the number of users who received prescriptions, according to documents. <laughs> If true, GG. He and Brody were allegedly aware, uh, aware that Dunn members had died and have been online post describing the company as straight up a pill mill, documents say. The charges culminate in a two-year investigation sparked by articles in the Wall Street Journal describing how some Dunn clinicians felt pressure to prescribe stimulants like Adderall, while others wrote prescriptions much faster than typical for clinicians doing thorough uh, patient evaluations. One patient died. Um, one patient died after a Dunn uh, clinician prescribed Matterall. The patient, Harlan Brand, had a history of opiate addiction, which is evident from the prescription drug monitoring database. Brand's clinician said the database showed no red flags. Uh, Band's mother said the Adderall prescription caused a relapse that ended with his death. Dunn declined to comment about Band in 2022, citing pa patient privacy. That's really sad if everything is said is true in this case. I mean, I mean, for the government to come after them like this, I mean, it, whew, they have a lot of good evidence there on them. Um, that's really unfortunate to hear what happened to the person who passed away and everything else that's going on there. Let's look at the comment section. Okay, Timothy Nguyen says, data collection and generation is the new front for AI in general. The LLMs have, found, have been found now to consume all the existing data on the internet, so more data is needed to train and improve models. Yes, that's, that's an interesting point. I, I wish Joe was here to talk about this, but there, people kept on talking about emergent properties in these models. Like if you keep on training it, it it's, if you keep on training, it eventually gets smarter in certain areas and in certain regards. And now I think about it more, it seems like the more you train it, it finds different pockets of obscure data, which then will give it another skill. And the way that it was being marketed to us was more, oh, it's an emergent property, but it's like the intelligence is increasing. It's more of more skills are being added to its, its repertoire, which is still impressive. And I think it's, a, it's really cool. But it, People were trying to leave this on of like, if we keep on going, it's going to get the AGI in. That could happen. But it'd be interesting to see how it works. And another thing too is I, I look at the current architecture and how they're training these models and how expensive it is. And yes, the juice is worth a squeeze because it's adding a lot of value. But I feel like we're kind of like in, I'm trying to stop saying like enough. I f if, if we look back in that period of time, this reminds me of when, the steam engine was first coming out. It was super inefficient, but it, hey, it could get a gear to start turning, and then maybe you could use it for a water pump or whatnot. And then over time, went on, we, be, we understood the science behind it, and we got better, or got better at tinkering. Let's just say not the full science. Got better at tinkering with steam engines and made them more productive to the point they could start, uh, they could, you know, move people. Like in, when the first train was created in, in the UK. Around. Hey, we want the following people on the show. Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Andre Karpathy, Demis Hassabis, Aron Sharinas, Brett Taylor, Mark Andreessen, Eugenia Kuda, Fiji Simo, Kimberly Powell, James Bedlock, Stephen Wolfram. If you know them, tell them nicely. Sick wants them here via Twitter, LinkedIn email, or if you can, set up an intro email uh, with me and them at info at svinvestorsclub.com. Thank you. 1820s, 1830s. And then you got much more efficient as time went on. And I feel that there's something in the architecture level that will allow future models not to have to train on all the information in the world on the internet and be able to train in a much smaller data set, but will do it much more efficiently and will be smarter. Now, it'll be interesting to see how all that, that plays out because this is not really my wheelhouse. Let's qu uh, quickly talk about what's on deck for next week. So for next week, we are, we're going to do our live streaming uh, on Monday. 
and then we're going to have Jason Saltzman come through. He's going to show us data about who's co who's coming in and out of OpenAI. Um, what, what companies like, is OpenAI gaining talent from Anthropic or DeepMind or Google, how that's working out. And then we're going to have Max Cho come through. He runs a company called Coverage Cat, which what it does is it looks at uh, your insurance coverage and um, it then allows it allows you to find you know cheaper premiums and whatnot. He's been using some AI and ML in his work, so he's going to co come through and talk about that. So we're excited about that. And then the following week, we are going to have uh, on on June twenty fifth, twenty fifth, Marcus Sacano is going to come through. He's going to talk about electric cars. Going to talk about Cybertruck. He's going to talk about electric, electric cars. What's going on in the market? And then Noor uh, uh, Siddiqui is coming through. She runs Orchid Health. What Orchid Health allows you to do is you get embryos, you fertilize embryos, and then they do DNA tests on them, and they can tell you which ones are going to be the healthiest for you when you decide to have a baby. And so she's going to talk about that and how that all works out. Anyways, we have a lot of other stuff going on in our Discord. If you haven't already, join our Discord. We have um, we have, we have 90 people in there right now, but we also have about 130 people who are eligible. So if you haven't already, pick up, uh, install Discord, join our group. It only costs two ninety nine to do so. And thank you all for the support and your time. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.